Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Welcome. You know, today I want to talk to you a little bit about a topic that's on the forefront of my mind. I've been reading a, a lot of uh, work at the moment, including uh, The Way the Brain Heals Itself by Norman Doig, a, a, a neuro, neurosurgeon, neuroplasticity expert, rather, uh, an amazing guy. He also wrote the book, uh, you know, How the Brain Changes Itself, which I think was a brilliant book I read about 10 years ago. So I'm reading his latest book, and I'm also reading uh, The Science of, of Spirituality um, by Rupert Sheldrake, and um, I, I read The Field and the Power of Eight by Lynn McTaggart in the last week. And, and I don't know why. Sometimes I go on these um, crazy, you know, uh, binge reading moments or binge reading weeks. And so, so anyway, I did. And uh, it, it was really interesting to, to understand more about how the brain heals itself and, 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 and these, these things. But, but one thing was very interesting in, in Lynn's work that I wanted to really point out. So, so she did all this work on the power of intention. And, uh, and by the way, you know, what an amazing woman she is. Lynn McTaggart, if you haven't read her, read her books, do it. Um, so, so, I, so I read this book and um, it was really interesting. She did all these experiments, you know, did intention experiments and changed the pH of water. And they scientifically proved it at, you know, real you know, proper universities. They increased the speed of, of plants growing and, and they healed and created healings in war-torn countries. So what was interesting is so she starts applying this to healing, right? The power of intention with healing. And she started to get amazing results. They started to track it. And what they would do is they would set up everyone around and they would set an intention that the person that they're working on would be healed or would be better. And, and what, what they found, which is so interesting, is in all of these intention experiences, the people doing the praying, sending the intention, got a greater result than the person that was being prayed for. Now, isn't that interesting? The person that was being prayed for still got a good result. Who thinks that's interesting? The people doing the praying, the helping for the others actually had a greater, a greater result. Who thinks that's really interesting? And so I just, I just finished writing her an email because I think that there's something that she has not articulated and missed in her book. So I just, I just finished writing her an email this morning and uh, with love, because I think she's amazing with love. But, but what she saw and she said, well, it's a rebound effect. So she said, it's a rebound uh, effect. It's, you know, rebound. And, and I think that that might be true, but here's what I know is true, is the person that's getting prayed for Everyone has already decided they have a problem. Everyone doing the praying wasn't worried about their problem, their thing they needed to heal. They were just focused on getting into the end result of healing, of health. And that's all. They weren't worried about their problem. They were just sitting there for days, hours, coming back every day, just focusing and getting into the end result without focusing on their problems. Whereas the person being prayed on, everyone decided that they had a problem and then that they had to be fixed. And yes, so it still created significant change. But I wonder why all the people that were doing the praying had such a big result. Here's the freaking answer. They weren't focused on their problem. So I wrote her this email. <laughs> Hey, Lynn, you know your world-famous book? My name's Chris Duncan, and I'm a new kid on the block, and I think that, <laughs> I think you've made a mistake. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> but it's funny. I said, I love you, and I think this is something to consider. <laughs> this is something to add. <laughs> oh, gosh. But I think she's missed it. I think she's missed it. I love her. I love her work. I love the science. I love everything she's done. <laughs> 
And, uh, and I, but I just think it's true. I just think it's true. Who agrees with me, right? Who agrees with me? It's that they're not focused on their problem. So they're just focusing on being in healing. Oh, my depression was gone. Oh, my hip, my hip is better. Oh, my diabetes changed. Oh, my cancer in my breast that I didn't tell any of you about is now gone. These are the results that they were saying. And so they think, they go, well, it's the rebound effect. Uh, you know, they're putting it out, it's coming back. And I think, no, it's science. It's science. They are creating a different environment inside of their body consistently. And by creating a different environment, epigenetics shows us that that will change the structure of the cell and send out a different protein. Sending out a different protein changes the body, but it doesn't say there's something wrong. It doesn't focus on the negative because by focusing on what you do not want, you keep it alive. And everyone collapsed the wave function into that person and said, you, you're sick and we're going to change you. You're broken. You're broke. You're upset. You're depressed. And we're going to change you. By doing that, they create um, uh, uh, two signals. First signal, you're this. Second signal, we're going to change you. So what happens? They become both. Whereas everyone here never said that they were anything other than, well, I got to get into a healing state. They get into a healing state, they stay in it. So for every day, they're just getting in a healing state, giving love and gratitude out. Guys, in order to give love and gratitude out, you first have to get into love and gratitude, health, acceptance. They get into it, they, they get into it, they get into it. Not focus on a problem, they get into it, they get into it, they get into it. Guess what? Now it's not there anymore. Well, how did that happen? Because you actually changed yourself. See, there's a lie we've been told, and the lie says you've got to see the problem. I was talking to a lady yesterday, and she's going to join our certification. She said, but yeah, you've got to know what you don't want to know what you want. It's crap. I was like, I'm sorry, like, I want you to sign up to my program, but that's just wrong. <laughs> Those of you who know uh, sales conversations, this isn't a good conversation to have. <laughs> I'm like, actually, no, that's not right. You don't need to know what you don't want. Imagine the only way to know what you want, you have to go around and find all the things you don't want. You know, it's just a very long way just to go for what you do want. <laughs> you know, it's like, that is like, you know what? I want to go from LA to New York decided I'm going to just start heading east, you know, I'm going to start heading east, you know, and that's good. We're going to start moving there. But oh, you know what? Like, as I'm going that way, I just want to try a bit of north. You know, I want to try a bit of south, <laughs> you know, just to see if that's what I want. <laughs> you know, no, nah, man, you want east. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. What was I talking about? Oh, health, yeah. So, so anyway, so I'm reading these books, hey, and and I'm and I'm realizing, uh, obviously, the power of intention. You know, and I'm going right, okay, that's cool. But what's more important than that is for us to stop recreating the past. See, we think we have to recreate the past in order to create the future. Uh, and it's, it's, really, it's really potent to realize that most of our decisions are just based off uh, past experiences, you know, past experience. What do you make of them? Is that Heather? Heather, I'm not sure what do I make of the people who offer up their suffering. I'm not sure. Heather, you might need to uh, write that into me again. Oh, is she talking to someone else? No, it's a, it's a good topic. I'm just not, I just need a bit of context. Happy to answer. Happy to answer. Happy to answer what I think. So the point is this, is the present moment you know, now, I mean, now, I mean, now, 
me now. It's just the most recent past, right? And, and if you break the word up, present, can you break the word up to present? Present. Oh, yeah, Bronya says, but Chris, surely we recreate the past subconsciously rather than consciously. Yeah, but who's your subconscious, hey? Right? Break the word up for me. You are. You're in control. It's, you don't have this big, bad subconscious fighting you. You know, it's not your subconscious. You are it. Hey, guys, write in the word present. Present. The present moment is just present it's present and we step into it it's present you see and that's very interesting when you think about how the intention has worked with these people is they just present a new moment now when you pre-send it when you pre-send that's when you step into the present you've got to realize that it's always we're always experiencing the past right it's present yeah i like the word kate i also like the word current I mean, it's a tasty fruit, but it's also the moment we're in right now, but it's also movement. The word current, you know, it's not, it's, it's like electrical current. You're in the current. I love that when we say, what's the, the current reality? Think about that, the current reality. There's so many ways to think about that, not just the fruit, right? I'm in the current reality. Mm, I hope it's Blackberry. <laughs> We're, <laughs> we're <laughs> it's small things, hey, it's a small, it's a small things. We're in the, in the current, right? <laughs> I got stop thinking about blueberry reality, right on. <laughs> but current, like an electrical current or a current of a stream, we're in a current, I mean, it's always moving. And so we must get, I'm glad, I'm glad Isha laughed out loud with me. That's right. Everyone else went, oh, man, this Chris Duncan guy. You know, just laughs at his computer screen. <laughs> Is to understand that we don't need to look for problems in order to create. We don't need to see the problem in order to, to create what we want. We don't need to see it. We don't need to look at it. We don't need to notice it. We just we just go because there's no such thing. It's just this is what I want to create. This is the current. This is the current reality that's moving. And this is where I want to go. And, that, and that's structure. And when I use the word structure and the word current reality, a lot of times we can think that it's separate. We think it's separate. But the end of the river and the start of the river, they're, they're not really separate. Hey, they're all just little drops of water. You can change back here and it changes down there. It's connected. When you think of structure, when you think of your now reality and, and, and your, your future, it's connected. It's one stream of consciousness, one stream of existence. It's a stream. And so when we're on the stream of existence and we're in the current, we have to understand something I was taught by Dr. Dr. It is, it is kind of Dr. Richard Bartlett. I studied with, I studied with him and I became certified in something called Matrix Energetics. And if you, if you want to ever look at the Physics of Miracle book by him, brilliant guy. And so he, he talks about the two points, the two points. And I went to, I'll tell you a quick story in 2000 and um, something, 2012, maybe or 13, uh, Harriet and I went to Seattle and we spent two weeks with this guy, uh, Richard, Richard Bartlett. Yeah, Pauline, you love his book. Anyone else? Anyone else uh, study a bit of Matrix Energetics? Great guy. Uh, having a tough time in life at the moment, I think. But overall, really great guy. And, um, you know, helped me a lot. You did as well? Nice. Two point. Yeah, cool. Matrix Energetics, Richard Bartlett. Anyway, so good guy. Went to his went to a seminar and and I this was you know me starting to really you know want to understand how the field works and everything else and so they do an intro night on the Friday and, um, and it's all good I'm gonna I'm gonna cover cover it now anyway and um, I I seen some changes happen in people I saw people fall over as he as he changed the field around them and, and you know all these these things happened 
And, um, you know, I was kind of, I was kind of in disbelief. And then I had some work done on me and I was like, wow, this is cool. My whole energy shifted and they hold two points around you. It's, it's amazing work. But then I seen this lady and she'd been there for two days. So it was the, the, the morning of the third day. And she'd been on one of those walkers for two days, you know, and so Richard's on stage and says, hey, is there anyone that hasn't had like a, a really great breakthrough experience or whatever? And, um, you know, a few people put their hands up, but this lady was like, she's like grumpy, you know, she had a walker. She was like, me, you know, and he goes, all right, cool, you know, come on out. And so the, she walks on out, you know, she, she was, she she think I think she looked a lot older than she was, but she's probably only in her in her late fifties. So you know, but she looked a lot older. Do you guys know what I mean? Like she looked old. She was, you know, hunched. So, so she she gets up there and he's asked her, you know, how how long has this been a, a challenge for you? Blah blah blah. Or she said, you know, I had this car accident. It hurt my legs. It was ten years ago, and then my son died. And she had all sorts of like really tough existence. And, and I'll never forget this, hey, because because Richard grabs grabs her walker and says, "Well, we need to move this out of the way." She's like, "All right, fine." So he moves it, and he brings up two two assistants around and holds them, and and um, and he says, "Okay, cool. So, you know, what is it that you would, um, you know, what would you what would you like to create?" And <laughs> right on, Clarissa, and he goes into these two points around her and he holds them, and then all of a sudden. Boom! This lady falls flat on her back, and um, they pick they they pick her up. She's like, I'm like, holy crap! This is a lawsuit. You know what the heck's just happened? Richard grabs her hand and starts running across the stage with her. This lady can barely even comprehend what's happening, so she's just moving her legs. He runs her down the flight of stairs that led up to the stage, around the room, and back up the other side. This lady's in shock. The audience is like, what the heck has just happened? And I'm sitting there going, I'm going to learn how to do that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he, he explains it. And I've sent, I've been out, done this with so many people. Now we do it in the recode. And it's where the, the two points comes from is, is to understand that in any moment we can recreate ourselves. In any moment you can, you can choose to send different instructions to your muscles that are in holding patterns. But you cannot do it simply by recreating what you don't want. Think about it. This is what you do when you try to create what you don't want. You say, hey, I know you're broken. I know you're sore. So I know you're that. Creates an identity in your back. Creates an identity in your liver. Creates an identity here. You say, I know you're that. And, but now I want you to be this. Do you see the pointlessness of doing that? Instead of going, you're this, you're this, where are you now? What needs to change? And that structure, you're this, you're this, that's what you are. That's the end of the stream. That's the end of the stream. And you're up in the current stream here. And you're about to flow to this. You're going to flow from this point to this point. You see, you're this, you're this, you're already this. You're just upstream, hey, and you just chosen. This is where the stream's going and you just got to let go and let it just flow. You know, that's a good quote. <laughs> you just got to let it go, right? And it will just go. Yeah, it's huge, it's huge. So here's how we do this. The first step is we, we must create the, the measurement structure. So instead of first asking myself, what is wrong? Hey, by the way, who's enjoying today's session? Where's everybody at? Give me a yes if this is worth your time. Am I getting your attention today? <laughs> The, the first step isn't to ask what is wrong and what do I want. It's just what am I creating? Am I creating health, uh, a flexible back, an amazing, but what am I creating? 
And, and the bigger you go, the easier it is to be in a true choice. And you get in that. You get in that. And then you use one of the most obvious things, okay, is you've got to just create a measurement structure. And that's all it is. We're, we're not recreating the problem. We're just, de we're just defining the point in space where we're starting. And that's it. You know, so too often we go, I've got a sore head. What should I do? Do you see that? That we're, we're defining our universe based on what we don't want. Same question, Krista. Same question. It's such an interesting thing. Most of us are only creating actions and decisions based on problems. Rather than stepping into that end. And it, I know some of you going, Chris, we, we know this, brother. We, we've been with you. But it's, it's the basics, isn't it? And it's we've got to realize that we step into that new us, not for the purpose of solving the current. We're just choosing it. Imagine you're just water and you get to choose where it's going to go. You know, that's, that's what you're choosing. You're choosing it. You're sending out intention. Everything is created twice. And you guys know how, uh, how I love to break up the word intention, don't you? Can someone, can someone write it the, the way that makes you remember it, you know? In the tension. Yeah, you're in the tension. And so you create it. That's, that's the intention. And it's going to pull you like a rubber band to where you want to get to it. Yeah, I know. I, I'm teaching you guys stuff that, that creates so fast, creates healings, creates miracles, because we can scientifically prove this. Ah, oh, that's a completely different question, Isha. It's got nothing to do with this. People mainly purchase out of their incompleteness. Intention. <laughs> that's an interesting way to do it. Right on, Kim. But choose the stream, hey? Choose the stream. So, so we've got to we've got to become really good at choosing end results, choosing health choosing abundance, choosing this, rather than only choosing what we, we wish to remove, you know, which is very, very important. So the, the next thing that's really, really potent is the power of choosing the right action. I was talking to Andrew earlier today, and, you know, I was like, well, this is, this is, this is my lenses. These are all my choices. So how many of you are doing lenses? Who is doing the lenses? A, a, a lot of us sometimes, yeah, no, no, it's good. It's good. Every single day, right on, Teresa, you are, you are cool. Head in this, yeah. The first thing it says up here is what is my intention? So, Ed, what does that mean? So, ADD. Oh, ADD, yeah, okay. So what is my intention? Someone's written in, I get bored writing the same things. I, I actually have, like, create, creation's not boring, right? Got it. Got it. A, same, if you haven't figured out, Donna, same, you know, but you, you, when you can, can channel, it says, what's your intention? It says it right there. Okay. And it's important to understand how to, to go, okay, well, that's my intention and step into it. So, so my, my intention today is, is you know, I, I intend, my intention is I'm intention with being the healthiest version of myself. I'm intention with, you know, feeling abundant. Okay. But then the, the second thing that, that's really true is in asking an open-ended question. It's something that uh, a lot of us can really use to tap into our intuition is, is open-ended questions, right? Which is, 
you know, what is my obvious next action? What could be my, and asking that, what is the obvious next action? So, so just think about this, you're in there, you stay in there and, and you get into that emotion, you ask, well, what's my obvious next action? What is the obvious next thing? And it, it's, it's funny, I did a, I did a YouTube video recently and, and it got shared like crazy because so often our, most of our actions are based off of things that, uh, uh, that we don't want. So I don't want this, so I'm going to do that. I don't want it. So it's, it's going into a different, different place. So when you do this in a healing sense, right, is you go, okay, cool. So I'm here. This is my intention. I intend to be healthy. What's that? Where am I now? Well, well now uh, this is the structure. What is the obvious thing that needs to happen? Okay. What is the obvious thing that needs to happen? And this gives the instructions to your brain. It's crazy. So I've, I've sat there and, you know, I had a sore back and I've gone, okay, what do I want? I never say I've got a sore back. I don't start there. I go, okay, I want this. Okay. That's what I want. I want to be here. I want to be feeling good. And I step into the end result, just feeling great, feeling so good about my body. Okay, good. Then once I've really put that to the universe and then I go, okay, compared to that, where am I now? Okay, cool. Now so back. What is the obvious thing that needs to happen? And boom, I get the answer every single time. And it's crazy. And I know I've practiced intuition, but I'll go, okay, cool. It's this muscle. And I'll get like a visual of the exact thing that needs to shift. And then boom, I'm away. Or, you know, Harriet the other day, she's like, oh, you know, my neck. I was like, all right, cool. What do you want? What do you want? Let's stay in what do you want? We stayed in what you want. I went in there with her. We're in there. We said, where are you now? So neck. And then what's obviously to happen, boom, it was this. And everything can shift when you do this. And this is, you know, this is literally, um, it's it's literally the way to, to create. <laughs>